what is the fourth dimension? Let's start with the first dimension, right? First dimension, we thought of in the most simple terms as a dot. The second dimension can be thought of as a line. A line segment. I can't remember. I think I think it was the, the metaphor is like the line segment goes on for infinity. Also in the second dimension, you know, you get shapes. So like a rectangle, a, a triangle. This, these are second dimensional objects. And these are how objects would look in the second dimension. And this is based on a book. I think it's called Flatland or Flat World. In Flatland, you know, in the second dimension like this, you're not going to have up or down. Up and down don't exist. It's just sideways vertically you know horizontal all the different sideways directions but in the third dimension that is when you finally have up and down because you're not just going sideways anymore now you can actually go up and down and that's the um that's the reality we perceive right now but that's no kind of like an illusion in some sense because the way our, our occipital lobes and our brains and our eyes all work and communicate together in complicated ways to perceive shadows changing and bouncing on light bouncing on objects to create shadows and the shadow is the only way we can even tell the difference between objects because the shadows provide contrast. But the way objects get bigger or smaller, the farther and closer they go away is also kind of an illusion that our brain creates. And it's really complicated. Like we perceive things in 3D, but it's like an illusion of things getting closer or farther, getting bigger or smaller or shadows, right? Now, it gets more complicated when you get to the uh, fourth dimension, which this represents a uh, what we can understand a fourth dimensional cube theoretically could potentially possibly look like. It's not like this is exactly what it looks like, but it's theoretical. Same with this one. It's an alternate version of it. The fourth dimension is theorized by, I think Albert Einstein said it was like uh, the time, time itself. So our third dimension that we exist in right now and perceive reality in three dimensions as right now is actually in this higher fourth dimension of time. And there's a fifth dimension that goes even outside time. String theory says there has to be, I think, at least nine dimensions for that theory to work, um, which they think are hidden because they're curled up so tightly within each other and tiny little things that are beyond our comprehension or vision, I guess. You know, the Bible does say, you know, God can be omnipresent. And, and that just that makes sense in our in our personal reality, right? If there was a being that lived outside, you know, that lived in the fourth dimension outside of our dimension, that means that they could be omnipresent within our reality when we're looking at a 2d drawing or something like that we can see the full image of of the drawing right you know the two-dimensional drawing so okay. we're outside of it we can mani manipulate it we can move it we can change it but yeah, if yeah. i was a 2d figure right i would just see a, a, a straight line right yeah, a straight you wouldn't line. Be able to see this yeah, you, you just yeah. see that line, right? When so, you're inside it, you can't exactly. Yeah, when you're a two dimensional figure, you can only see one dimensional stuff, right? When yeah, you're a three dimensional figure, you can see two dimensional stuff. Yeah. But then when you're a fourth dimensional being, right? A time being, we can say, it's right? Full That's something like made up. You can see the full perspective of 4D or 3D beings, right? All and so I think that. All at once. That was one of the key things I talked about in one of the chapters in my book about, you know, God existing. If these, if this fourth dimension and fifth dimension do exist and, you know, the math seems to back it up, then theoretically, we can't say for a fact, but philosophically, if you follow that logic and you go outside this fourth dimension of time, God existing outside of a fourth dimension, which is time itself. Yeah, he would be able to see. It'd be like, it's so hard to describe, but it's like, it's like a map. Like you said, it's like a, like you look at a 2D map, you can see everything at once. But like you said, if you're in that map, you know, you're not going to see the whole thing. You're just going to see what's right in front of you because your perception is limited by your, by the dimension you exist in. But if God, yes. if God's perception becomes unlimited when he, like I was saying in the book, like he, when he goes outside the fourth dimension and he's a, if he's a fifth dimensional or 10th dimensional being, then he's going to be outside time itself. And if you're outside time itself, what does that mean? That, mean? that means you're an eternal being. That means you have always existed. There's no beginning and end for you. you you've just, I mean, because time, there's a beginning and end of time, supposedly, right? From what our limited human understanding is, because we, we, can, we can't go travel back in time. We can't go travel in the future. So we can see, we can, 
look, imagine the future, and we can imagine the past based on what books and textbooks and writings, but God could be, or any higher dimensional being outside of that could be, there's no beginning and end. I mean, he's just literally outside of that. So he, he exists forever. That's and it makes me think like, you know, how we have the idea of heaven is yeah. heaven the fourth in the fourth dimension. That's what I was thinking in the book too. I was saying that because like that could explain heaven because if heaven is eternity, well then eternity is outside the fourth dimension. But how can God be omnipresent, omnipotent? How can anything be like that? But it's like if something is really a fifth dimensional being or higher, then yeah, they're gonna they would see three dimensional objects like we look at a two D map. They would see it all at once at the same time, and they would see all the time laid out just like a map. But the time would be 3D objects and 3D universes laid out. And yeah. we, can, we can never understand that because we, we are trapped within the fourth dimension. What is living outside of time look like? You know, because, you know, even even in our universe, time, like we talked about before, you know, how they have those atomic clocks. We took one to space, you know, and they both had the same time. But time seemed to be going differently in space. And so what, what does that mean, right? To live outside of time in the fourth dimension. Like, okay. why is it? Why is time different in, on Earth than in, in space? We, we become so dependent where everything's about time. Yeah, we see time as linear. Mm. We're in the present moment. We're in the here and now. Oh. Right? Once it goes forward, that's it. You don't go back. Albert Einstein or some famous physicist said, no, like time is not. Time is not necessarily linear. It's not one direction. You know, you bring up a, such an interesting point because, you know, 2D figures, right? 2D figures, they see right. they see matter or what's in front of them linear as well. Yeah. Once, once you jump out, right? Once you jump out, we see time as linear, right? Mm -hmm. So check this out. Check this out. So... Like